Hey YouTube, so this is going to be a video about what happens when you end up with electrolysis going uh, and damaging your hull on your boat. So basically when I started this process I noticed that there was a couple of bubbles in the paint uh, at the transom of my boat. Most of them have been ground off but uh, if you're noticing you know any um, bubbling in the paint like you'd see in a car then that might be an indication that you're you're seeing electrolysis in your hull. So I'll walk you through this. I noticed bubbling in my paint and uh, I scraped it and there's pinholes or just holes going through the hull. And so I took my transom apart. And uh, the transom you can see is on the floor in many pieces. It was the consistency of wet cardboard. So uh, at first I thought that it was just the transom itself being really wet maybe the adhesives or materials inside the wood caused some sort of reaction with the aluminum which caused it to pit and effectively rust and so if we go and look at the hull on the inside of the transom i've ground out and drilled out a lot of the spots um, but you can see basically all these little pits there's a good one there you know the whole the whole way across my transom Everywhere there's not a drill hole. Anywhere there is a drill hole basically was a hole that was going through, a pinhole that was going through the transom. So I really, really scratched up. So first I thought that must just be because of the plywood and that I was basically just going to replace the plywood and get the holes welded up and that was that. But then uh, every time I would Google these sort of things, the common answer would be must be electrolysis. And so I decided, well, what the hell? I'll check to see if there's any continuity between the battery leads and the hull. And so I just took multimeter, hooked it up to the negative battery connection right there and uh, measured the continuity or measured the resistance between the hull and the battery cable. And to my amazement, 18 ohms and roughly the same thing through the positive cable. So. Obviously, there was some sort of grounding out. So I went through the fuse, the fuse barred, uh, fuse block there, and uh, circuit by circuit tried to trace it down. Turned out it was going through the radio. So now I'm wondering why is the radio grounding? So I just bought a new radio this year, just something from the marine store, nothing too fancy, but I just wanted something I could play through my phone because I had a 30-year-old tape deck in there that barely worked. So, nothing special. Standard connections. Um, but when I would measure between the the power cable or the power supply to the radio in the hull, there was continuity. And so, I'm going through trying to figure out what the connection is. And turns out, it was through the antenna. So, here is the antenna from the boat. And so it used to come right through here, right through this spot here. And so just below the carpet is half an inch of plywood. And then below that is probably 100 thou aluminum sheet, which is obviously riveted to the hull and continuous. So the battery through the the connection to the radio through this piece here has got continuity all the way to this piece here. And this little kind of thing that looks like a beer cap was touching the hull where it's rusted. So that rust might be because of maybe some sort of grounding issue or just because it got wet. But either way, that was where the power was going through the hull and back to the battery causing if we're looking at 18 ohms of resistance, something like 0.6 amps when the battery is fully charged, constantly electrifying the hull. So, um, unfortunately, it was something as simple as that that caused the, the battery to discharge into the hull and uh, basically destroyed my transom. Um, you know, ways that you could prevent this would be always checking to make sure with your uh, multimeter that or periodically that there's no continuity between your battery connections and your hull. Um, and 
other than that, maybe not leaving your battery connected if you don't need to. Um, but yeah, if you see bubbles in your paint, most likely it's some form of electrolysis. So I'm going to be uh, basically, I looked at getting the transom replaced by uh, basically the, the main guys in Canada. And they figured about 1800 just over the internet was given a quote. Um, and so, but they were booked up until the end of the year, until the end of June actually, and it's December now, so I want to be on the water by April. So I'm going to, in the end, sandwich the aluminum for the transom between two pieces of 100 thou aluminum. Uh, I'm going to trowel on uh, 3M5200, and then uh, I've gotten some uh, solid rivets, and then I'm going to pneumatically uh, attach the rivets to the hull so that... Uh, basically, it acts as one big sandwich of sealant, bonding, and rivets to provide basically, uh, you know, a hull that won't leak anymore. The actual transom itself is still quite rigid. It's there's no fatigue cracks in it. Uh, you know, I can sit on it and pretty heavy guy, and it holds up. So the actual transom itself is still in pretty good shape considering it's got. 200 holes in it but that's the plan this boat's 30 years old if i can get five more years out of it then uh i'll be happy that's all for now so i'll be putting videos up as i uh, put it all together this is a uh, 1990 alumacraft competitor kind of looking like a mess in there because i working in a tight little shop but had to take it off the trailer just to get it in but it's better than working out in the cold in the winter thanks for watching